Good evening and welcome to State of Business on Our Television. I'm Chamal Fernando. Let's have a look at the headlines. New legislation slated to address climate change and environment. President reveals. Alcohol production falls by 19%. State Minister says. Now the news in detail. President Rani Vikramasinghe said that the government will be introducing new legislation to parliament to ensure that all policies focus on the transformation to a highly competitive export-oriented economy. He added that the government is currently drafting a single legislation that will deal with both environment preservation and countering climate change. The president made these revelations speaking at the Sri Lanka Climate Summit held in Colombo recently. The government will be introducing legislation in parliament which will ensure that all government policies focus on the transformation to a highly competitive export-oriented economy. In, in fact, the bill most probably will be gazetted next week. But I, I'm not going to deal at length with the bill except to say that one of the items, the bill, in, the, in carrying out this transformation is to ensure that we achieve net zero by 2050. And I can tell you we will achieve it before that. Sri Lanka can do it. So in making our policies, which are going to affect all of you, not in a transformation of an economy into export orientation, but into an economy that is based on achieving net zero. So that's how we are going to work this out. As it is, for the first step is we are already drafting a new law which will deal with the environment and climate change. In some countries, we have different acts dealing with the laws, but we decided that we will bring it together, one law which will handle both environment and climate change. We will retain the Central Environment Authority, but we will also bring in the Climate Change Centre. Foreign Minister Ali Sabri announced that Sri Lanka aims to finalize its foreign debt restructuring process by June, potentially slashing its debt burden by approximately 17 billion US dollars. The foreign minister said this speaking at the Presidential Media Center recently. Minister Sabri emphasized Sri Lanka's commitment to a non-aligned foreign policy fostering relations with both Eastern and Western nations while safeguarding sovereignty. He highlighted the significance of collaboration with major partners including China and India to drive economic development. The government's focus on debt restructuring follows a successful completion of the initial phase addressing domestic debt restructuring. Minister Sabri expressed determination to secure agreements that could significantly alleviate Sri Lanka's debt burden. Minister of State for Finance Dr. Ranji Siambala Piti revealed a notable decline in alcohol production by 19% in the year 2023. State Minister Siambala Piti added that the production of quart alcohol bottles alone experienced a substantial drop, plummeting by 15 million units. The state minister said this, responding to an inquiry during oral question sessions in parliament yesterday. He outlined that while 57.7 million 750 milliliter bottles were produced in 2022, the number declined to 39.5 million in 2023. Similarly, the production of 375 milliliter bottles reduced from 36.6 million in 2022 to an unspecified number in 2023. Notably, the quantity of 180 milliliter bottles witnessed a decline from 105.8 million in 2022 to 90.5 million in 2023. In addition, the state minister disclosed that a total of 214 new alcohol licenses were granted in 2023, with 147 licenses allocated for the tourism industry. Furthermore, Minister Simbala has said the tax levied on alcohol accounting for 75% of the retail price with the majority of tax revenue derived from alcohol sales. Stay tuned, we will return after this commercial break.
welcome back. Sri Lanka's export community has rallied together, representing various chambers and associations to confront the pressing issues hindering the country's export potential. In a unified call to action, exporters have identified key concerning spanning transparency in government agencies, market access challenges and regulatory obstacles. Jayanta Karunaratna, President of the National Chamber of Exporters of Sri Lanka, delivered a poignant address outlining the gravity of the situation at a press conference held in Colombo recently. Karunaratna emphasized the necessity for swift action and strategic collaboration between the government and the private sector to reverse the current trajectory. Central to his plea was the call for enhanced collaboration to formulate and implement policies conducive to sustainable economic growth. Moreover, Karnaradna underscored the imperative to address outdated laws and regulations that hinder Sri Lanka's competitiveness in the global market. He advocated for a comprehensive overhaul of existing legal frameworks to align them with the current industry practices and global standards. By modernizing its legal framework and fostering a conducive business environment, Sri Lanka can enhance its attractiveness as a business destination and pave the way for sustainable economic growth. Speaking at the press conference, the Secretary General of the Joint Apparel Association Forum Sri Lanka, Johan Lawrence pointed out that a large appreciation of the Sri Lankan rupees will make the export industry uncompetitive. He said that the mandatory conversion of exports proceeds into LKR, which was brought into place in 2022, should be abolished now, taking into consideration the current market condition in order to keep the rupee rate stable. We have always lobbied for a stable exchange rate and large swings of the exchange rate in either direction are not good for exporters. Right now we are seeing a rapid appreciation of the Sri Lanka rupee, which now stands at around 296 to the dollar. This increase in the LKR is due to a number of factors, including reduced debt payments, the continued ban on the import of motor vehicles, and one that I want to touch on in particular, which is the continued requirement for mandatory conversion of export proceeds into LKR. This requirement was brought in 2021 at the height of the foreign exchange crisis when Sri Lanka's foreign reserves were at dangerously low levels. In fact, at that time, the apparel sector played a pivotal role in bringing forward our dollar payments to help support the country make payments for urgently needed fuel and medical supplies. This policy has been in place now for over two years, and the market situation that existed then has vastly improved with the implementation of the macroeconomic stabilization program and the forex liquidity at both commercial and the central bank. These are now in a very stable position. Our point, therefore, is that in this background, there is no requirement for the mandatory conversion to continue any further. The continued enforced conversion requirement further strengthens the LKR as every month exporters are forced to convert their foreign currency balances into rupees. This adds to the foreign currency reserves of the country at a time where there is no demand for dollars, thereby increasing the value of the rupee and making exports uncompetitive. The government of Japan and UN Women have joined forces to launch the Pathways to Peace project in Sri Lanka aimed at strengthening women's economic empowerment and leadership in peace building and conflict prevention. This initiative builds upon Sri Lanka's adoption of its first national action plan in women peace and security in February 2023 with support from Japan since 2018. The project seeks to empower 500 women peace builders with capacity building support, enabling them to lead dispute resolution, mediation and peace building efforts. The project will also extend support to 500 women-led micro-enterprises in former conflict-affected areas. Ramaya Sargado, head of UN Women Sri Lanka, expressed gratitude for Japan's partnership in advancing the women's peace and security agenda in Sri Lanka. The Pathways to Peace project will be implemented in the districts of Anuradhapura, Batiklo, Menar and Mulativ, marking a significant step towards sustainable peace and gender equality in Sri Lanka. Stay tuned for the stock update.
trading at Columbus Stock Exchange ended on positive notes today. The all share price index gained 122.07 points to close at 12,518.97 and the S&P SL20 gained 57.34 points to close at 3,730.12. The turnover was 2.5 billion rupees and over 111 million shares were traded. Up next are Forex rates. That's all our news for today. For this and more, subscribe our channel on YouTube, follow us on Facebook. Take care and good night.